Hello, everyone, and welcome to the third episode of this new reinvention show. This is the place dedicated to one topic only, to really one issue only, which is how do we learn not only survive, but thrive in our new, constantly disrupted, uncertain and volatile world. And here I share insights, I share research, I share practice, and I bring some amazing guests when I have a chance to help you make sense of what's going on in the world with constant pounding change, with nonstop disruption, one after another, and with an opportunity to turn this disruption, take this uncertainty, take this volatility, and make it your competitive advantage. So that's what we are all about. Today, it's just me. And today, I'm going to address the question that you wrote to me about, ask me about, and really um, keep coming back to again and again. And that is, what is reinvention? What is reinvention? And there's so many ways to answer this question that I will kick off a series of shows where we sp will speak about the difference between reinvention 1.0 and reinvention 2.0 where we will speak about nine different types of reinvention, innovation being one of them, and the difference between innovation and reinvention. And we'll speak about many other aspects of reinvention that are so, so crucial. But we will start today with a little bit of a story of how I got to this topic, how I make sense of this word, and why is that people like the CEO of Netflix are putting reinvention on top of their list you all saw his wonderful book, Netflix and the Culture of Reinvention, not innovation, but reinvention. And also you saw that people like the amazing best-selling author, historian Yuval Noah Harari, who announced that forget programming, what you should teach your kids, you should teach reinvention. So I want to share with you my story, my relationship with the word reinvention and how I make sense of that word now. We will not cover a lot in this show. We will go for about 20, 25 minutes. And then in the coming Thursday, every Thursday, 11 a.m. U.S. Eastern, we will come back to other aspects of reinvention. In the meantime, I see you guys are welcoming me. Please let me know where you join us from. Virgil is here. Wonderful. I see Alamin is here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, our team member from Reinvention Academy, Stas, is here. Welcome, Stas. We're excited to have you. Let me know where you're joining us from. I do know where Danielle is joining us from. Danielle is certified reinvention practitioner, practicing in Canada, and, of course, member of our Stellar Reinvention Club, one of the original reinvention trailblazers. So welcome, welcome, welcome. I see California in the house. I see Wisconsin here, Tampa, Florida is here, uh, Washington, just outside of Washington, D.C. is here. I see our certified reinvention practitioners and members of the club are coming in places. Welcome. So what is reinvention and how I got to this word? To understand what is reinvention to me and what does reinvention mean for this global movement that we are building around the world that is really connecting thousands of people in pretty much every industry, every country. At this point, it's over 5,000 people that Reinvention Academy brought together through our courses. What, what is this word? How did we get here? Well, for me, it started long before I was born. And I tell this story only recently, up until a couple of years ago, I would refuse to speak about this. I thought that I need to give you a facts and figures about speed of business model reinvention and cycles of change and uncertainty index. And that would be the essence of what I have to say. Well, personal stories matter. And we're, there's my personal story. And my personal story, my relationship with reinvention started long before I was born. Those of you who know my history, I come from the Soviet Union. I was born in what now is an independent state of Kazakhstan. And I come from a family of political dissidents. So when um, about 100 years ago, in the late 1920s, um, early 1930s, almost 100 years ago, 
when the government of Soviet Union decided to kill 40% of Kazakhs, my great grandfather was one of the vocal opponents of this genocide. So he was arrested, tried as an enemy of the state and executed and his wife died almost immediately after. So my grandfather grew up in an orphanage house far away, speaking language he didn't understand in a land he didn't understand to figure out how he's going to survive the years and the century of crazy disruptions. So he went to be um, in the army during the Second World War. He survived many other disruptions of the Soviet Union. He became a journalist and again, a vocal opponent of the policies. And because of that, he was arrested and put in jail more than once. And after one of those jail terms, he killed himself before I was born. So I grew up, I was born into this family without me knowing it, with my parents instilling in me this idea that change, disruption, crisis, all kinds of upheavals will be in my life all the time. That I need to learn how to look at change as a normal part of life, maybe not always the best part of life, maybe it's not always the most positive change, but it's something that I have to prepare for. And they were right, because when I was growing up, the Soviet Union collapsed. And in the middle of wonderful, wonderful August, we saw tanks on our streets. I remember seeing them outside of my school window. And we saw the kind of transformation that you cannot even imagine. Something as solid, as unmovable, as unshakable as a country disappearing overnight. The Republic of Kazakhstan was so unprepared for this disruption that it took us almost three years to develop our own currency. We had no skills of reinvention. We had no tools at our disposal. So I saw firsthand, thankfully I was not executed, I was not attacked, but I saw firsthand what it looks like when your whole world is disrupted. And I feel like this is what we're going through in the last few years. This is the new world. If before it was happening once every 50 years or maybe once every 100 years, in nature they call it 100-year-old flood. In uh, economics they call it once in 100 years recession. It used to be once in 100 years. It used to be once in 50 years or once in 30 years. And today, if we're lucky, it's every few years. And if we are not lucky, it's more often than that. So this is the context in which I came to first science and then I came to business. And I realized that something big is going on, that it's not a matter of one tool or adjusting one set of performance indicators. It's not about do I wait until the crisis comes down until things go back to normal. This used to be the path that we would teach crisis management and, you know, tighten your belts, you know, headcount, fire people, do other things, survive until the crisis is over, and then you will be okay. That used to be the story. That used to be an approach. And that worked when crisis happened once in a blue moon. But today, Every data I look at shows to me that if it's not COVID, it will be new technology. If it's not new technology, it will be new regulation. If it's not new regulation, it will be new competitor. If it's not new competitor, it will be new supplier issues. If it's not supplier issue, it will be new customer demand. But today, you will be disrupted constantly again and again. And because of that, what we think is a healthy adaptive response must change. So reinvention is not about surviving until things normalize. It's not about buckling up, tightening our belts and finding a way to adapt until things go back to normal. No, they will not go back to normal. Today, Reinvention is about learning how to thrive in a state of constant change, constant uncertainty, constant disruption. And because of that, 
we speak about the difference between reinvention 1.0 and reinvention 2.0. And I know, I know that you are looking at uh, at the subject, and many of you are relating to the story. Some some of you are saying this is very close to your own story. I love that. So this is a beautiful thing that you are reacting to different terms. The difference between reinvention 1.0 and reinvention 2.0 is fundamental. Reinvention 1.0 is what we used to do for the last 100 years in business, in politics, and in personal life, which is we have a rare crisis and we do one big renewal, one massive project that renews our business, our products, our processes, perhaps our career, our portfolio. And then we normalize and we keep going with the new version of ourselves for a significant amount of time without much of change happening. Now, this used to be okay when the change was happening rarely. When the uncertainty index that so beautifully there uh, International Monetary Fund has been producing for us for the last 60 years when the uncertainty index was showing very low levels of uncertainty. But today, we cannot treat reinvention as a one-time project. It's uh, like treating reinvention as a wedding, something that we do maybe once or twice a year, uh, a year, not a year, <laughs> once or twice a lifetime, once a lifetime, once or twice, maybe three times, and we move on. No, reinvention today, reinvention 2.0 is looking at the reality where uncertainty is constant. So it cannot be a project that we adapt successfully, that we leap successfully, that we move on successfully. What we do today is building a system, a process where reinvention is less like a wedding and more like taking a shower. If I don't take a shower on a regular basis, I begin to stink. So if you don't take a shower on a regular basis for your products, your processes, your leadership practices, if you don't reinvent your career, your business model, your organization on a regular basis, it begins to stink too. And for that, reinvention cannot be a project. It has to be a process. It has to be a system. It has to be treated the way we treat any other fundamental function of an organization and fundamental function of a professional. If we don't do things on a regular basis in finance, in marketing and sales and operations, our companies disappear. Same with reinvention. This is today a process, a system, a cycle of continuous proactive renewal. And that's the difference between reinvention 1.0 and reinvention 2.0. This is a huge difference. And I love that you guys have reaction. Yes, wedding versus a shower. Wedding, wedding versus a shower. One time thing that we outsource, we used to give reinvention to consultants, to somebody outside. Why would you need the skills of reinvention inside your company if you're only going to use those competencies once every 30 years? It's illogical. That's why reinvention skills, the capacities, the processes, the best practices were all outsourced to few organizations that would do those massive weddings, massive reinvention projects for big, big audiences. Now, when reinvention happens every year, every two years, every three years, our latest research showed that for 60% of companies to survive and thrive today, they had to reinvent every three years or less with about, I want to say 16, let me very quickly check that data, with about, uh, I will give you a specific number, with 16.1%, and this is the data we published 2018 versus 2020, 16.1% of companies in 2020 were reinventing every 12 months or less. In this case, you have to bring this capability in-house and you have to build the process just like your budgeting process, just like your supply chain management process, supply chain management process, and all other key processes have to be built with thoughtfulness, with care, 
with the resources and with skills this subject deserves. Now, I love, love, love this question on why reinvention and not adaptation. And this is not about debating the words. So you can call, you can choose any words that are calling to your company culture. If you're a consultant that are working for your client, I usually choose whatever word that helps that culture get engaged in a cycle of renewal rather than feel resistance to it. So in some companies, I use one word and in other companies, I would use another word. But the philosophy of reinvention is important. So why not adaptation? Because adaptation is only one, one format or one type of reinvention. In the reinvention practice, and those of you who have my latest book, you know this tool called the Reinvention Portfolio Canvas. So if you have the book with you, this is page 180. Page 180. We talk about nine types of reinvention. If you imagine a grid and at the bottom you have the, the scope, the scope of reinvention, there we have three types of scope. Subsystem, system, and ecosystem. This would be something like if you're in the automotive sector, reinventing a transmission would be reinventing a subsystem. Reinventing the entire concept of a car would be reinventing a system. And reinventing not just the car, but also the charging stations, the um, uh, suppliers and the way the retailers, the dealer, the roads, and so on, that would be the ecosystem. So subsystem system and ecosystem and on the horizon uh, this was horizontal on the vertical axis you have the intensity and the intensity would be incremental change intermediary type of reinvention and really radical type of reinvention here we're talking about the level of intensity so between the three horizontal and three vertical, you have nine types of reinvention. And adaptation, generally speaking, would be in the bottom left of the portfolio. Again, those of you who have the book in front of you, this is the portfolio canvas. I don't think you can see it very well, but it would be in the bottom right of the canvas. And the innovation would be in uh, bottom left and the innovation would be in top right of the canvas. That would be the difference. But I absolutely, absolutely love that question. I think, Virgil, this is a great question on why not adaptation or innovation on many other terms. For us, this is about building a portfolio of initiatives where there is a balance between more incremental adaptive type of efforts and more radical and large system type of efforts. All of them are necessary. They actually are changing throughout the life cycle of the company or life cycle of your business model. Sometimes you need a little bit more of incremental adaptive strategies. And in certain parts of your life cycle, you need more radical more intense type of more whole system type of renewals that is the difference so i hope i hope that today this helps you helps you clarify what are we talking about and if you are not sure if you don't know what i'm talking about here we do have a resource for you so it is in your chat right now you can download the 85 page preview it's free it's a pdf and you can get a sense of the data i'm talking about and some of the tools i'm talking about so we would be happy 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 to see your feedback download this 85 pages now and let us know what you think about it. But let me come back to the definition. And when we were working on this group, on this book, more than 4,000 people worked on this book together. We could not agree on one definition of reinvention. And I love that. I love that because diversity and variation, having a lot of variativity, is a way natural systems survive better. We have research after research that shows the more diverse is your team, the more diverse is your thinking, the more diverse is your organization, the more likelihood is of surviving and flourishing in whatever context you live. So I love diversity. And that's why we settled on 
five definitions of reinvention and they follow the history of this subject for sure. So let me read you those definitions. The definition number one is reinvention is a practice of embracing change by reimagining and remaking something so that it manifests new and improved attributes, qualities, and results. A practice, not a one-time event, but a practice of embracing change. Love that definition. The second definition, reinvention is a systematic approach to thriving in chaos that includes ongoing anticipation, design, implementation of change via continuous sense-making, anticipatory and emerging learning, and synthesis of cross-boundary, cross-disciplinary, and cross-functional knowledge. Love that. That's a mouthful. That's a long definition, but essentially it's a systematic approach to thriving in chaos. A very simple definition. Reinvention is a way to foster sustainability of a system by dynamically harmonizing continuity and change. And the next time we meet, I will dive deeper into this dance between change and continuity, because that is one of the biggest mistakes that I see in business is the obsession with change and not enough respect to continuity. And there are two other definitions I invite you to download. So you have those links in the chat. You can download them and tell me what is missing from those definitions. I would love to see your addition. But this is the start of our conversation on what is reinvention. In today's volatile, uncertain, and disruptive world, reinvention is no longer a one-time event. It's a mindset. It's a method. It's a movement. It's an ability to build proactive cycles of renewal, whether it's in your own life and career or in your organization, your team, your community, your country, your world at large. This is what reinvention is. It's so much bigger than just a one-time event. It's about bringing the level of life in your system and preserving that life and elevating, increasing the level of life in your system. And because of that, it's about fundamental principles that manifest themselves in many different forms, product reinvention, process reinvention, um, revenue stream reinvention, we look with uh, so much, so much of direction, about 15 different ways to reinvent. So I hope this gives you food of thought. I would love to hear your feedback. I would love to hear your objections to this view and your take on reinvention, because this is a place of dialogue. So what is reinvention for you? Give me your answer in the comments. And share with me what other questions you would like me to answer, perhaps data that you want me to share, situation you want me to address, or a topic that you've been thinking for a while and you would love to bring to this platform we call the new reinvention show, the reinvention show. And I love this reaction from Virgil. To me, reinvention is fundamentally changing who you are in order to survive a win, while adaptation is remaining fundamentally the same by changing the way you see who you fundamentally are in order to survive and win. I love that distinction, Virgil. It's definitely not how I use the word reinvention, and it's definitely not how the reinvention method uses the word. But that's what makes it interesting, the diversity of definitions. Whatever works for you, the message is the same. Whether or not you like it, in this decade and more, you will face more disruption more uncertainty, more volatility than ever before. So you have a choice whether you will use this uncertainty and turn it into opportunity, or you will be dragged through change, kicking and screaming, playing by others' rules and allowing them to change you against your will. So I invite you to look at reinvention as a way to proactively choose the new version of you rather than be dragged into the new version of you kicking and screaming. That is ultimately what reinvention is for me. Look forward to your feedback. Look forward to your question. And of course, I invite you to also join us to test out some of our tools, practices, and beliefs. We have a free five-day event happening right now. It's already day four, but it's not too late to join us. We have this amazing, amazing community, over 300 people 
come for one hour each day and we have a workbook of different tools. We are using our own tools, such as Titanic Syndrome Test, but we also use neuroscience. We use biology. We use blue ocean strategy. We use design thinking put into one simple workbook that we go through with you via a process we call Easy Reinvention Lab. Right now, we have our last Easy Reinvention Lab of the year taking place. It's free. It's always live. We meet on Zoom. It's amazing professionals from all over the world. It's a powerful community, and it's not too late to join. This is your last chance to join us this year. So I invite you to grab the link. Those of you who have who have the, uh, the link in front of you, please do join us. And I would love to see you test out some of these assumptions and go deeper. Love your reactions. Best says, best says that reinvention is a whole system approach to change that elevates our strengths by building our resilience skills. Love that definition. Love that definition. Larry says, do you think that reinvention has risk? 100%. Anything in life other than death has risks. But I will address that in our future shows. Thank you, Larry. Let's speak about risks and costs at one of the upcoming shows. Love, love, love that. And I do appreciate your feedback. Yes, let's use disruption. Let's make it our friend. Let's make reinvention our superpower. Let's turn disruption, chaos, uncertainty into opportunity. That's my hope with you and for you. With that, I'm finishing today's reinvention show. I'll see you next Thursday, 11 a.m., where we'll look at another aspect of reinvention. Every Thursday, 11 a.m., we will look at another little bit, little insight, tool, approach. And of course, I will bring amazing guests with me from time to time who can help us answer this question. How do we stop surviving disruption and start thriving in it? With that, thank you so much for joining me. Look forward to your comments and I'll see you next Thursday.